Okay, so let's get this started. So you have stumbled into link state vector routing here at ITF 117. It has been a while since we have met for the last time. It's about like, you know, a little bit more than a year. So, you know, it's great to see you, you know, and everybody again. Uh, so first I have like a few, you know, things just uh, uh, administration here. Keep aware, you know, this thing is uh, being recorded and some meeting tips, which is more for the people, you know, for afterwards. Some resources for this particular uh, session here, where you can find the slides and things and onwards and the agenda. And then uh, onto the, you know, real administrivia here. So, uh, so next to me we have like Ketan also. Uh, so we have like a new chair in this in this working group here. So welcome Ketan. And also thank you so much to Victor who has been chairing the working group since the beginning also, you know, sharing his experience and and, and you know and all his goodwill here for the links that you know for the data center and you know uh, routing itself. Uh, so that's the agenda. Um, we also have a note well, so please be aware everything you say here is like, you know, uh, sh sh shared information for, for, uh, for the ITF. And on top of that, also be aware we have a very strict code of conduct here. Uh, be polite and be respectful to everybody uh, as such. If you see behavior which is not acceptable, please let us know and we will take the, you know, the, the correct action here. You know, we take this very seriously. Uh, so this is the agenda here. Uh, any if you have like any update or you want to change something on the agenda, please let me know. Okay, you're... Hey, Kiyur Patel uh, from Arcus. Uh, one quick question I have is, uh, what is the status on L3DL drafts? We have implementations and we'd like to progress them as well. So it would be good if uh, we can start working on them in parallel as well. That's just a question. Yeah, so we will cover them next as part of the working group documents and we can discuss it. So coming back to your agenda, so we have like three topics to discuss here at the working group. And then the fourth one is uh, to be shorter with this like pending uh, for which you know, would like, we would like to say like a few words and to start, you know, uh, let you think about that on, on what we can do next, you know, once we have our uh, BGP SPF spec uh, finalized. So the first thing here is the personnel update, as mentioned. So we have like a new, a new co-chair here, Ketan. We also would like to welcome uh, our new area director here, <laughs> uh, Jim Guichard. So we haven't met him here, you know, as part of the live meetings because everything is kind of new and we haven't met for a very long time. And in the same time, would like to also thank uh, Alvaro for being our AD for a very long time since the beginning. He started up this working group, so you know, so thank you, Alvaro. Okay. Okay. So uh, now we'll go over the uh, working group documents uh, first, and then uh, the individual drafts and the other documents. Okay. Uh, so these are the documents that have been actively uh, being updated and worked on. Uh, the first one is the core uh, protocol specification uh, where uh, Alvaro has done uh, a review or rather completed his review uh, and he has shared comments. Uh, I understand that uh, the authors have, are working on the last bit uh, and you know we'll hear more about this uh, during the presentation from Kayur, which is on the agenda. Uh, uh, on this document, I'll be the document shepherd. Uh, the IANA code points have been allocated, uh, but you know we'll uh, cross-check them again. Uh, if anything is pending, we'll take care of that. So uh, after this version, expect a, a review from my side, and then. Uh, uh, we would like to just wrap it up soon uh, in the next month. And Jim has promised to pick it up as soon as uh, uh, we send it out to him. Okay. 
The next one is the applicability. Uh, so we had a working group last call, and uh, there were uh, the routing directorate and ops directorate review is all complete. Comments have been handled, uh, updated. Uh, I had also done a review, and uh, I believe the authors are working on it. Uh, but probably this would go second priority to the first, uh, the base specification. Uh, so on both on the BGP SPF thing, please watch out on the mailing list uh, uh, in the month of August, uh, and we hope to progress that. Uh, the third document is the BGP LS Yang, and uh, you know we'll have it uh, covered uh, by Mahesh uh, later today. Uh, next one. So this is Kayur, This is the documents that you are talking about. So uh, it's been a uh, more than a year now that uh, they have expired. Uh, we'll discuss a bit more about them towards at the end of the session uh, on getting them. I would say uh, updated uh, more properly as a charter and milestone. So let's discuss it towards the end of the session. Uh, this uh, next one. Uh, there are these individual documents. Uh, the first one, uh, BGP SPF for SD WAN, we have that uh, being presented today. Uh, the implementation up, uh, update or implementation report, uh, thanks to Pushpashish for uh, you know updating the document. Uh, this is something that we need uh, as Jim and uh, ISG reviews this uh, to know what is the latest current status of implementation. Uh, and then we also have a flood reduction uh, uh, as an individual draft. Uh, next, I think, yeah, so I think we'll, yeah, so we'll discuss this towards the end, but uh, Keur, uh, if you could start with your uh, first presentation, the BGP SPF. Yeah, Thank you. Hi, I am Keir Patel and from Parkus, and I'm going to talk about the SPF specifications. Um, so the status update is the latest version. Well, uh, current latest version, draft version 26, was submitted in June. Um, this has two pending uh, comments um, that uh, were given by Alvaro, and that is going to be covered in version 27th, I'm going to talk about them at the end of the presentation. Uh, obviously, working group last call was successfully done. Multiple implementations now are also available, um, at least two that we know of. Um, early routing area review directorate was done successfully. Um, the ops uh, director review was also done. And then fi uh, finally, Alvaro, who was the AD, past AD uh, for this working group did the detailed review uh, on the draft. The Yang model, which was outstanding for a while, has been posted as well. Fairly straightforward model, but we do request your feedback on that. So like I said, um, Alvaro did a, a pretty detailed and insightful review uh, at a high level that involved many things from him, but uh, at a very high level, uh, first of all, suggested remove comparisons to IGP as it was said that this is a complete new extension and maybe a protocol in itself, not to be compared against anything else. So we, we looked at that. Um, there was error handling text that was added, both to do semantic as well as syntactic validation of NLRI and attributes, uh, which was essentially missing in 7752, uh, I think that's the RFC for BGP LS. Uh, but since it uses LS encoding here, we had to provide that in this context. Um, optional uh, BGP SPF synchronization requirement uh, that is usually present in IGP, um, the text has been added for that. Um, obviously, the status TLV clarification was done in a bit more details. And finally, we beefed up the security section as well. Now let's talk about some of those changes that we did in details. So from an error handling perspective, we did semantic and syntactic validations of all TLVs. Essentially, we have referred 
to whatever the syntactic and semantic validation was done in IGPs, be it in ISIS or in OSPF, um, to be referred out here in BGP uh, SPF because the TLVs were originated essentially from the IGPs itself. So we have made an appropriate references for that um, in the draft, wherever it's applicable. Uh, also clarified error handling for order violations of the TLVs. Um, this was present in 7752BIS. And we have uh, also incorporated some of those error handling techniques out here in this draft as well. Explicitly called out mandatory TLVs that are needed for um, SPF SAFI as well. And obviously, we have made a reference to 7752BIS as well uh, uh, while doing it. Um, any errors now in a mandatory attribute um, sort of results in attribute discard, and attribute discard results in um, withdrawal of the NLRI. So that has been made um, pretty much a norm, and therefore, we have adhered to the strict error handling from the draft perspective. We've also modified SPF computation section. Well, we have beefed it up with the relationship of ECMPs and unnumbered next stops when you are doing SPFs. So that text is added. Um, we've added text for prefix suppression in case of, hey, if the routing table size is limited at the forwarding level, what do you do about it? And then last but not the least in this, we have clarified the status TLVs transit bit handling um, that is out there. We got a feedback on neighbor synchroniz synchronization, and we have added that essentially, um, if you look at OSPF, it requires you to do LSDB synchronization prior to advertising any adjacencies. ISIS, of course, considers this as an optional. Therefore, we have also added um, an optional requirement of end of rib uh, before advertising the link. Now, one of the two pending comments that we are going to incorporate in version 27 is um, in spite of doing all the synchronization uh, handling, it is quite possible that a prefix could go uh, outside this means of checks and essentially get into an unsynchronized manner by some reason, because BGP announces hop by hop its announcements. And if so happens, we have just mentioned, how do you recover from that state? And that could be either clearing a session or issuing a router fresh. So that is the text change you are going to see in version 27 that we are about to uh, publish. Um, and uh, that should take care of uh, the Synchronize, synchronization issues. For the status clarification, SPF status bit, we have clarified the usage of status bits in failure convergence scenario. Um, how do you uh, basically use it along with um, uh, LS Safi NLRI and then obviously added the INR registries. Obviously, the security section has been beefed up and um, the big text addition was that, hey, while you do SPF SAFI um, and it can span across multiple autonomous systems, but typically the scope is restri restricted to autonomous systems um, that belong uh, within a single administrative control. So you can span across multiple ASs, but as long as they are in single administrative uh, domain or control, you should be okay. The other change I do want to quickly uh, talk about before I wrap the presentation is uh, in the area where the node descriptors um, that are referred in the SPF document, um, the error handling for those node descriptors um, was missing. Um, and that was the feedback that we received. And we have simply referred to uh, 7752 biz for that to say here are, here are the places where you got the node descriptors from and here is how you will essentially do semantic and syntactic validation for that. 
So those are the two changes that are coming in version 27, post which we think we've covered everything and we should be ready to hand it off to Alvaro and um, Jim uh, for detailed review. Alvaro for one more pass in case he feels any of his comments are um, uncovered and then Jim obviously. That's all I have, questions? AC, did I miss anything? Do you want to? Yes. Yes. And we are also assuming, um, and to some extent, please mind you, putting some blind faith that you have done an appropriate error handling checks in <laughs> 7752. Trust but verify. Yes. Questions? Hopefully, Jim, you should like the version 27 of the document. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's all I have. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Mahesh. All right, so um, I will talk about the Yang model uh, that Kayu referred to. Um, should be a fairly simple model, should be yeah, easy to go through. So uh, this draft, of course, has been adopted by the working group, so thank you for that. Um, mainly, um, we're trying to con uh, use it, uh, define the configuration and management for BGP LS and LS SPF. Um, one open question is whether we want to even think about uh, LSVPN because that's uh, the address type uh, family that's defined, but uh, we, the work group needs to indicate whether they want any uh, work done to configure and manage that. Um, the draft also defines a model for the link state database. Uh, it the uh, draft itself, of course, augments the BGP Yang model, which is close to getting working group last call. Um, IDR will pretty much decide, is waiting on an implementation status uh, to uh, publish that. Uh, but this model basically will augment the BGP Yang model to add uh, the two address family types. So at the global AFI SAFI level, it is essentially adding the capability for prefix limits, instance identifiers, algorithmic type, and node status among other um, leaves. It also adds a link to the LS uh, uh, DB. And at the neighbor level, something very similar does prefix uh, adds capability to support prefix limits and other uh, relevant configuration. It also enhances, or, oh, sorry, augments the BGP Yang model at the global Lafi Safi level to uh, support statistics, uh, statistics like update sent received for BGP LS, and of course for um, scheduled computed uh, maximum and average duration for LS SPF. And something similar uh, at the neighbor level uh, for uh, statistics at the, for that. Um, next steps, as far as the draft itself is concerned, we have two open issues uh, that uh, we are going to address as part of the next uh, update. And I know there are some comments that AC had provided, so maybe any issues that we identify there, uh, we will A, open it in GitHub here and then work on it as appropriate. Um, and that's pretty much all I had. Any questions? This is that Rashad Joe since he's in the queue? Okay. Yeah, Rashad. Yeah, so uh, I haven't been following this document, so my question might not make sense. I'm curious why the Yang model covers both BGPLS and LSSPF in one shot as opposed to two 
separate docs? Just be, is it just because the base BGPLS functionality was not done? Um, again, uh, we chose to do it as a single draft, but I'll let the work group decide if they would rather see two documents for it. Um, from our perspective, it's easier to do it as a single draft, but I'm open to someone saying no, they would rather see it as two drafts. Thank you. So, uh, yeah. Faz, so I have not read the draft. I am, however, staring at the Yang tree right now. And clearly, I know a little bit about what's inside the uh, PGP Yang model. I, I don't object to LS attribute contents going into a shared model at the moment, because I believe that they actually are the same thing for the most part. Uh, if we end up with LS uh, VR specific features, you know, we want to call those things out, but I think otherwise it will still be a good hybrid. What I'm not seeing in here, just to make a quick glance, unless I've not scrolled far enough down, is the actual LSDB is not actually in the ribs. What's the intent there long term? Oh, OK. Uh, and that might be an omission. I'll probably try to follow up and make sure we add that as an issue and update the draft. OK, and part of the motivation in AC will have this dear to his own heart because of uh, they had a hard issue of doing this in their models as well. Uh, if we can get some good parallelism with the stuff that's in the existing IGP models, that would be, I think, a nice to have. You know, okay. You know, we, we have uh, places where there are very different things in LS because it's not quite OSPF, it's not quite ISIS, it's somewhere uh, weirdly in between, but it does share a lot of fate and being able to do cross comparisons, I think, will make a lot of people happy. Sounds good. Uh, Ketan Taralikar, uh, as a participant, uh, I think uh, in my personal view, uh, it makes sense to do it in one document okay. because as Jeff mentioned, there is the BGPLS attribute, which is shared across the two. The LSDB will also be shared across the two. So I think uh, it probably makes sense to do it, but uh, have uh, the review also with, with IDR at uh, you know regular points. Okay. The last one was probably as working group chair. <laughs> uh, Kail Patel Arcus, I, I was going to jump in and say that maybe the chairs here want to bring the idea of chairs that will happen here. It's well coordinated across two. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Uh, oh, whatever. Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Uh, do you. Would you like to control the slides or would you like us to do it? Uh, okay, I can control slides. Yeah, I think they can. No, they. you, you can go ahead and... Uh, uh, there's a share preloaded slides. I think you can. So I need to click ask to share slides. Uh, yeah, there is an option. That, yeah, yeah. Thank you. You can approve that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it should come up. Okay. Yeah. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Hanshu from Huawei, and today I'm going to talk about a new use case for the BGP SPF that is for a multi multi segment SD1. Uh, first of all, uh, this page is about how the SD1 works. Basically, it's kind of uh, an IPsec terminals added to the existing VPN pass, and uh, the BGP is used as a control plane to distribute the port attributes, the IPsec SA. Uh, there are two, two BGP updates. The first BGP update is just the client route update, and the encapsulation uh, extended community is set to this new SD1 hybrid kernel type. And the second uh, uh, BGP update contains the information about this new uh, SD1 hybrid kernel. It contains the, the terminal port IP address and the IPsec SA stuff. Uh, the reason BGP is used as a control plane is to simplify the peer authentication. 
you got BGP, we have RR to, uh, to, to collect and di distribute the IPsec assay. So we don't need to run IPE between uh, each CPE. Uh, so we can implement the scalable IPsec kernel management. And the details can be found in these two working group documents. And uh, um, and uh, the the uh, the uh, this, this page is about uh, the ba the basic SC one the, the single hop uh, the SC one terminal is established between the CPE directly just a one hop and in, uh, actually uh, the directly uh, ter terminal across the global internet between the two CPE the quality may be not good enough so we need to use uh, build, build a, a, a gateway network to cross the global internet and uh, between between each gateway we can choose locally optimize the link and we can stick multiple uh, se one terminal together to form this kind of multi-segment se one and in this case the cpe and the gateway network are usually under the different administrative control. Uh, so this gateway network is usually provided by an MSP, and it provides service to the to the CPE. So actually, this gateway kind of forms an overlay network. It provides a connection uh, for the for the enterprise uh, running their CPE, and. Uh, this uh, overlay network, the link of this overlay network can can have many different forms. For example, it can be an SE1 terminal over the internet or MPRS, or an SE1 terminal over the cloud backbone. They have different proposals, or the, uh, the gateway can be directly connected by a physical link. Uh, and when there is um, multiple this uh, overlay network, uh, the question is how to find the, the shortest path to uh, from the CPE one to CPE two. For example, the, the red line and the yellow line, there are two kind of path choice. And uh, uh, gateway one need to find the, the, the shortest path to the to the gateway three. So uh, to accomplish that, so we can use the BGP RS SPF to connect the, the uh, topology of this gateway network. And uh, uh, if we set the cost uh, uh, between this gateway, the link cost to one, then we can connect, uh, calculate the, the shortest path uh, in terms of the hops. And if we can connect the link SLA uh, between this SE1 terminal and the link, then, then we can basically calculate uh, for, for the TE. Uh, here is the basic usage of the PGP SPF by SE1. And uh, the link, the, the link uh, there is a two type of link. The first one is overlay link, the SE1 terminal. And uh, for this kind of link, the BGP RSPL peer relationship is established between the gateway and the RR as the controller. It can connect the topology information and the SSL, SLA of, of the SE1 terminal. And for the direct link, it's actually the underlay link. And the BGP RSPL peer can be, can be used for this link discovery. And if it's running between the gateway and RR, it can use a photopolity connection. Uh, the node RRI is actually the uh, uh, auto autonomous systems and the BGP RS identifier for each gateway. And the link RRI uh, contains the one port IP address. And uh, if, if we want to connect the SLA of this link, it can. Uh, it uh, will be the link attribute. And by connecting this information, uh, e each gateway can understand the, the topology of this whole gateway network. It can calculate the, the best route to or other gateways. 
So this is uh, uh, currently this draft is only a uh, BCP draft is only documenting the, the usage of the uh, BGP RSPF for this multi segment NC1. We may have uh, some extension ideas uh, based on this BGP RSPF uh, combinator. So, uh, anyone have any comments and suggestions? Okay. So it's uh, uh, Jim Guichard. Um, it's actually a question for the chairs. This doesn't appear to be in charter to me. Um, so I think yes. that's something that we need to look at um, regardless of what the content is. Um, and if you don't think so, then obviously it's something that uh, you need to look at from the rechartering effort that I know you're gonna talk about as well. So I, I could be wrong, but that was just my initial reaction. Yes, that, that's correct. It's not in the current charter. I actually like the idea, Kiv Delarcus. Uh, but I was going to ask a quick question um, that uh, when you do something like this, is SPF Safi been thought about as an underlay Safi, which is used instead of IPv4 Unicast? Or you are thinking about having an SD WAN Safi that goes overlay then SPF and then IPv4 or is it SD WAN Safi over SPF Safi? I think uh, uh, everything this kind of the two kind of link. The first is the SD WAN overlay link. This will go to the SD WAN uh, Safi and the direct link is actually underlay link. So it kind of overlay underlay uh, combination. Okay, in that regards, what we have done as a work in the SPF Safi is to provide an underlay connectivity in DC clause. So while this extends it to the van, but the concept is quite similar. Thank you. Hi there, Jeff Oz. This is mostly addressed to the chairs, our AD in the room, and the ADs that aren't here from routing. There's been a conversation that started about what do we do about all of these pieces of uh, micro work in IVR for things like no HBLS. Uh, a lot of those are SR focused, so that in fact we have an SR LS type of case, and we have other things that are just LS. The conversation that has been previously raised is: is it time to maybe find some sort of functional split for LS type things in BGP into something and we're concerned uh, as we talked to the ADs about uh, creating another working group that just simply eats another slot in IETF because the work is in many cases small. This is actually a counter example. This is potentially not huge. It maybe fits under LSVR in terms of what could be in scope if they should if it's recharter. But maybe this goes into the broader conversation of are we at the magic point of there is a BGB less working group which Maybe this is what it becomes, or maybe it's something else. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, there has been discussion on this, and uh, 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 how about we we continue this in the next topic uh, when we get to that? Uh, but I understand that uh, your uh, this was not specific to this draft, right? Uh, but uh, before we go on to that next topic, uh, uh, after this presentation, I just wanted to uh, share some inputs with Hangshi. Uh, is that uh, please uh, take a very close look and review uh, the BGP SPF base spec, uh, because as Kayur mentioned, uh, you would probably need to expand on uh, in what parts you are leveraging that spec and what is being added newly on top of it. Uh, especially the, the underlay and overlay relationship. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think we can move to the next topic. Which yeah, Ketan, yeah. I just want to make one comment just to respond to Jeff. And um, you know, the the one of the other ads isn't in the room, so I don't want to speak for him. It, it is something we've been discussing. I think it's time that we had a wider discussion on that. So I'll take it up 
um, with him, and we'll uh, we'll we'll hook up outside. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, thanks. So Hangshi will move on to the next topic, which is the uh, the next steps discussion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, we are close to uh, getting the core protocol spec ready uh, for uh, publication to the ISG, uh, right? As we discussed earlier, the Yang specification is also progressing well. These things were our milestones. Uh, the applicability is also being worked on, and I mean, it will also go through. So uh, this is a time to perhaps uh, review uh, the working group charter. We have already adopted L3DL work, but it's not, uh, I mean, literally it's not there in the charter or the milestone. Though uh, we know that uh, there is a requirement uh, in the BGP SPF protocol for for that functionality. So it's a missing piece. We need something for it. And uh, the working group has adopted L3DL. So as part of uh, the revision of the charter, that's one of the items. Uh, there may be more things uh, that, you know, uh, I mean, maybe the SD-WAN is one example. There could be other things. So we'd like to, uh, you know, get feedback from the working group. Uh, here as well as maybe on the list. And you know what, uh, Jeff's comment uh, earlier falls in this section. Uh, so uh, definitely there is a very close relationship or working with the PGPLS and BGP SPF. Uh, and there are things that we need coordination there closely. We have been fixing back and forth. So yes, it's, I would say we need inputs from the working group uh on on those aspects yeah yeah okay you okay, put it Arcus. um the l3dl work uh, again has been going well i know of implementations so um i am in full support of including that in the charter probably charter should be amended and as we do the yang work uh or rather i should say charter must be amended or can be amended pick your choice um, as we look at the charter and uh, crank out the Yang work, I think uh, that work also can be leveraged inside IDR, depending on what the chairs decide here with the IDR chairs um, collectively. Um, but the work is a bit done here, uh, which uh, is helpful uh, across both the working groups. And last but not the least, um, the SD-WAN work uh that was just presented i think it's a good work um you don't need to amend a charter for that uh is my understanding you could simply adopt that and and continue that work if the working group feels we should adopt that work that's no, jim um <clears throat> so on the sd1 thing i i, I I mean, my read of the charter is that um, we probably do need to amend it a little bit to, to take that in, just because of the wording around, you know, this is specifically the data center and so forth. So we need to look at that, I think. Um, the other thing that you didn't mention, which I think it, um, would be very helpful, is that implementation um, document. Um, I don't, that doesn't need to hold up rechartering, but it would be great if uh, to get that from the working group if we can. Uh, uh, Jim, that's been updated. Uh, we'll share with you. Yeah, I, I, I saw that the, the documents there, but it's not adopted into the working group or anything oh, like okay. that, from what I could tell. And yeah, it's not okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, it was never adopted, mainly because it's not, it doesn't have a milestone yet, so yeah. Yes, Keir Patel, Arcus again. I, I agree with Jim in in sense that uh, we should adopt the implementation spec uh, 
that is out there for a while, um, at least that would be a reasonable thing to do. Now, the SD1 work, uh, I, I all I'm suggesting, this is just a suggestion, is that you could look at those sites as four data centers and data center interconnect, and it fits straight into the charter. Or you can look at CPEs, the business interconnect, and there the charter could be amended. So depending on what working group likes, it's a good work. Yeah, I, I think the main point that I'm making is that if, if we're going to do the rechart in any way, then let's, you know, let's not, um, I, I don't want to have to wordsmith, right? So if, if it's in the charter, I'm, I'm, it's clear. So because we're going through that effort anyway, it's, it's easy to just put wording in there that, that makes it explicitly uh, covered. Okay, Randy? Um, the L3 TL documents can be trivially refreshed. I just got bored doing so. My middle name is not ISIS. Um, so chairs would just please say what they want to do. Uh, yeah, so I, I mean, yeah, you could refresh them, uh, but we will need to get them, I think, formally in the recharter. Uh, that's what uh, that's what our understanding is, right? Yeah, so this is Gunter speaking here. So, so Randy, indeed, you know, we didn't ask you to refresh those drafts because we asked that like many times. <laughs> and you probably would be bored by doing the refreshing. So the, the, the master plan was that we would get like the BGPS, you know, SPF spec uh, more formalized, push it through. Then go through the recharter exercise and you know, adopt it into the LD3DL work formally yeah, from that moment onwards, and then progress this draft, you know, going forward as such. Let me be clear: I'm not worried about your process. Check yes or no. Should I refresh? Yeah. Will do. Yes, Keur. Yeah, Keur Patel, Arcus. Uh, can we put some timelines also on the charter amendment? Will this be done before Prague ITF? Uh, let's try to do that, but let's get the base thing done first. Okay. <laughs> or in, maybe we can have the discussions in, started in parallel as yeah, well. Yeah, that was the comment mainly for a, a chairs and, and Jim as an AD. If we could put some timelines, that would be great. Yeah, so. So going from a timeline perspective, so uh, what we were thinking is that from the moment that the BGP SPF you know, draft itself lands on the desk of Jim, that we actually start in the working group the discussions for the rechartering uh, from that moment onwards. And then hopefully by you know the Prague IETF, we're going to have like some you know draft which has like you know, of, of the charter with some degree of consensus, which we can use as a, you know, as a base framework for you know, formalizing that, you know, that update. Yes, Jim, j j just one point of clarification, um, and this is more for Kaya, that, um, you know, I have no intention of being a blocking factor here. So, um, you know, the incentive really is get, get that document to me on my desk and I'll deal with it. But in the same time, please continue to talk about the recharter, get the text up together, and because um, that's going to come to me eventually anyway. So I'd rather the working group fin finish that, that doc um and as soon as you feel with that done then just get on with the recharter and stuff don't don't wait for that document to go through the isg because that that takes some time too so then let's let's do do things in parallel okay randy are you still in the queue or
so uh, I think uh, going back to the point that Jeff raised, uh, I wanted to, and I said that we'll come back to it. So any uh, specific views or input that working group members would like to share about, uh, I think Jeff, you mentioned BGPLS work in specifically, right? Yes. So any views here or remote for the working group to look at that? So the, the caution I want to offer, and this goes, you know, eventually the right answers get Elsevier chairs, LS chairs, some of the, S, uh, some of the spring chairs, uh, all into the same room to have these conversations. My one concern about nominating you guys as LSVR as being this piece of work, you know, the generic LS stuff that is the IGP fe uh, feature of Doom that makes ACM happy. You know, I was like, please get this out of my working group. Those things are pretty easy as copy and paste type things. And you know, the pattern we discussed with Andrew as part of the conversation was, you know, we, ha we have basically three classes of work that's really happening in LS in IDR right now. Pattern number one, copy and paste some bit of IGP. That's easy. You know, the fact that it's taking quite as much process is probably an annoying thing to everybody involved. Thing number two, there's some generic LS impacting stuff that uh, doesn't really have strong impact on the protocol, which is basically we're putting this extra bit of annotation state into LS. Again, pretty straightforward. Um, category three that we discussed at absolutely belongs in IDR at least, is we're changing the core LS protocol. You know, clearly you have a lot of experience that with some of these 72 bis, and hopefully that work won't need to uh, be reopened for a long time. The sort of fourth category of stuff overlaps more along this conversation about you know, like LSVR is a extension on top of LS. We have a lot of segment routing stuff that requires a lot of cross review with people that are deep experts there. And it also overlaps some of the tease people in a lot of cases because a lot of the stuff gets used. So the question I suggest you ask yourselves as LSVR versus you know, maybe splitting a little bit more of the core work off to a common separate LS group is, would you want to take on work that is segment routing and tease heavy when it's not the core competency of the reviewers here? And we know whoever is doing the work for that sort of thing is going to have to go off wherever that happens to be. I assume Kayer is going to have opinions about what the review cycle looked like. And effectively, what we're sort of looking at is this is sort of a meta working group. This is a tech area that touches a lot of things that we'd like to share resources while at the same time trying to avoid having the bleed over overwhelm each of the individual working groups. We, we don't have a good mechanism for that in IDF right now. Go ahead, Kev. So, Kev Patel Arcus, uh, speaking as a working group uh, member and not as an IDR chair, I would say that in IDR we did 7752, but we did 7752 in probably the most uh, uh, simplistic manner compared to the IDR documents we write in sense that we never put any serious error handling in place, any parsing mechanisms, just bytes on the wire and ship it out. That was it. In LSVR, we spent con considerable amount of time uh, uh, doing the error handling and, and, and doing a consistent error checking, if you will, on the protocol packets. We now have one of the one of the 7752 bis co-chairs slash i'm sorry co-authors slash editors also here as a working group chair that tells me that we have sufficient amount of intellectual base here if ls work has to be looked into now if it goes somewhere else which is totally fine my preference still would be that LSVR related LS work should just stay here and be managed and operated here. Uh, Ketan, uh, as individual, uh, so one of the things that uh, you know uh, 
came up in my discussions with Alvaro as uh, the co-edit and as editor of 7752 Biz was that yes 77 the original bgpls specs was just bits on the wire and we never really cared about it because all of that was supposed to be handled by a uh, quote unquote consumer and none of those consumers were defined or standardized in itf uh the bgp spf happens to be the first consumer of ls which is being standardized so i just to make sure that it puts things into context why those things could not be uh tackled at all in uh, the idr working group uh and some of the other consumers for sr are like controller which controllers and all which are very proprietary they are not uh, you know anywhere uh, in the itf thing jeff has you're hitting the next relevant point the original idea for ls when it was advertised out is this is read only and it's sort of best effort and it doesn't really matter that much but it very quickly in even the first year of it being deployed got used for tools for people to build interesting things so if a strange mismatch of the current rfc says these things the error handling's up to you good luck may the odds be in your favor and we have people that are actually trying to build important network services on this and if this was normal bgp they'd be furious that the error handling is so sloppy so i don't know what we're going to do about it i don't think that uh, you want to have a 70 fit 752 biz biz um well i'm sure that'll be part of the longer conversation yeah so on that one i think uh, we'll uh, of course take more discussions to the list but also uh, we need a broader discussion with uh, idr chairs ads and probably other working groups as well spring uh, perhaps as uh, jeff mentioned yeah jim so it I, i mean in summary it seems to me that you know we need to however the format is we need to get the round in ads and the relevant chairs from IDR LSVR um together and tease and and possibly spring and let's have that conversation because I, you know that there, there are pros and cons on both sides I I I too am a little concerned that um if, if we break things out in a certain way then you know we need to make sure that we don't break BGP the expertise is there in IDR so uh, you know there are a bunch of things that we need to talk through which which we're not going to solve in this room today so so let's you know let we I'll I'll talk to the other round in ADs and we'll set something up to to have that conversation i think is he this is ac speaking as a working group member yeah the obvious uh the obvious reason for taking it out of IDR is IDR has already got a full set of uh documents that are working group documents that are asking for adoption that are but as jeff uh pointed out it's way beyond link state information now i mean there's even now there's i believe there's flow spec in bgpls now too you know flow spec sr policy <laughs> everything under the security i mean there's probably I thought I saw something for security information going in there too. So it's it's way beyond link state information. It's 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 but it does all share the BD, BGPLS encodings, validation, everything and the but the applications are completely different for the consumers of it. Yeah. So putting it here we would need to get it cross reviews from others but that is the obvious reason is we have l- more room more bandwidth on the list and in the working group if you did want to divide and conquer so just one comment uh, see i mean as a as a working group member in idr and and contributor to the lo- lot of the ls uh, work there uh, i don't think we have experienced any uh, you know delays in a uh, processing or any of the uh, progressing of the work i just wanted to make sure of that 
and yeah we don't yet have flow spec in bgpls but uh, i cannot guarantee that it would not come <laughs> okay i missed that <laughs> yeah so i i missed the last comment yeah so i i hope i'm not out of context um uh ac i'm not sure i agree with you on bandwidth but i'd love to hear about your examples on idr bandwidth i find that that hopefully with the great aid of care and and uh, jeff we're processing things um, but i'd like to hear about if there are processing problems i do realize that we consistently don't get enough time at ITF meetings because we're limited to one or two. If that's the real problem, then let's go forward. But I'd like to hear more details. Uh, the cross review issues that we've had with other working groups uh, between base BGP and other additions have proven to be problematic over the years. So I'd like to see the stuff that has lots of BGP interactions stay in IDR. Um, if so, I'd like suggestions because we've tried it both ways. You know, we've tried it with Best, we've tried it with LSVR. I've been, you know, we're let's talk about all the problems as well as the thing based on the experience. Thank you. I I I note that I note that we've had problems. Do I think it's a mistake that would be taking it too far? I, I think it's always important to try to get multiple uh, threads through information, but we've had problems with BEST because they're, the final review of some of the BEST doc documents have proved to be problematic at the ISG, and that's the wrong place to have the problems found and fixed because it takes too long that way. So. I really appreciate BEST's work. I really appreciate LSVR's work. I simply want to go back and have a real good discussion on how we do this effectively and how we find problems. So um, that means I want to dig into the problems and have a thoughtful discussion, just as Jim said. Uh, so uh, just... Uh is uh, one of the ways to do this could be to establish very strong guardrails probably on what changes to BGP can or cannot be done or what, let's say, within which attributes and, you know, not no impact to the decision process. I'm just thinking if we Jeff, have some... Jeff, Jeff has got a draft that we intend to talk about in the IDR session today that talks about attributes problems. There are other things we... You know, I was there with BGP LS and I asked them a whole bunch of questions and they swore us, they promised me what they were doing and they didn't. Those things will happen, okay? That's, that's part of being practical. So we will try to set, uh, we should continue on trying to set those, but we also have to have process, we also have to have rational uh, discussions. All of you are really good engineers. I believe in the rational discussions between engineers rather than hard fixed boundaries. I'd like to suggest boundaries and suggest as, as Jeff has proposed, things of good best practices. But if we get into large ironclad things, we're gonna slow down and we're not gonna have good technical discussions. I hate to sound the the court of rational, but that's that's my point. Okay, Patel Arkes. So now I have two comments. One, as an idea co-chair, is that uh, whether you want a guardrails, whether you want uh, to have some uh, clear demarcations, that should be a conversation between chairs and AD, I think, not here. So that being said, working group chair, Hawk, hat off now speaking as a working group member i would say lsvr was created a number of years ago for a reason my preference would be to strongly keep lsvr related work 
in this working group. If that involves LS related changes, so be it. And then the chairs could figure out how do you want to keep synchronized between IDR, Bear Spring, anything else, that's fine. If the new LS work is coming here and if chairs think it's the right thing, please feel free to go ahead, including AD. But the minimal requirement as a working group member is any work related to LSVR should stay here within the charter and then have it coordinated best amongst the chairs um, as the chairs deem fit. So Jim, uh, um, Kay or uh, I mean, as far as I understand it, there, there is no, just, just to put the record straight here, there is no discussion, at least that I'm aware of, of moving LSVR anywhere. So LSVR staying. As, as things are now. I think, I think the concern is, does the BGPLS work stay in IDR or not? I have my own personal opinions on there that I shouldn't express now. But um, as you said, let's have that conversation between the chairs and the ADs and we'll, we'll fix it. But LSVR is not necessarily part of that conversation, just to, just to make that clear. Agreed, Jim. I'm being super specific because we have a draft for Yang and I just want to ma make sure that that draft stays here in all the Uber conversations that happen. We want to stay super focused in executing that draft and that work forward without having that work being derailed is my point. Jeff, I was in. We're, we're having a lot of very theoretical discussions, good. Good observation is that you know these things may not end up like I said they don't fit necessarily in IETF process. You know guardrails is a way to enforce these things. As Sue has mentioned, you know we have places where we have process that you know hasn't worked out. What we really need end of the day is communication. We're looking to get the people that care about the topics talking in a place. IETF likes to do that in the umbrella of a working group. It could be a working group. It could be a directorate. It could be a BAF. You know, it could be literally you know, a cabal, if you want to call it that way. You know, we just want to actually get everybody together to talk about the topics and figure out the organizational structure that looks like. And frankly, the way, you know, LS is one of these technologies that is intended to solve a lot of use cases at this point, certainly not how it started. And what that means is rather than trying to constrain it one working group or another, our choices are throw all the work in one place and still have the same problem of the consumers of it having their different use cases that, you know, three different uh, constituencies, one third of you understand what you're talking about. That doesn't necessarily serve anybody aside from making sure that the LS encodings are the same thing. You know, what we do want to do is, you know, for picking on like segment routing as an example, if there's a use case and they come to IDR and we have people that aren't following the relevant work in spring, it doesn't do IDR any good to say, yeah, this looks like a great WGP extension that follows all the rules, only to get to RFC publication time to have somebody in spring finally wake up a notice and say, this is not what we think actually is meant to solve this problem, please stop. So it's the coordination issue that we're looking to solve rather than the, you know, what organization this lives in. Okay, so I think the queue is empty now, so but that's about it. So thanks everybody. So we give you back uh, 25 minutes. <laughs>